So I'm in Power BI here and I want to download a new visualization. You see up here they have a bunch of standard ones, but then there are also ones that people create uh, that would benefit you know people and they make it free to download. So I'll come down here to these three dots and I want to click get more visuals. And I get this pop-up here. It says enter your email address, Power BI desktop, and blah 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 blah. Okay, so I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna enter just my email. And here's the issue though, it's gonna take me to a new screen. Okay, so I don't have a Power BI account. Okay, sign up, click here. So I'll click there. Okay, and now it brings me to this screen right here, and it says, this email looks like a personal email address. Uh, enter your work e address so we can connect you with others in your company. Well, I don't want to be connected in a company. I don't have a company. I just want to use this for my own personal use. So, you know, why does Microsoft do this? I don't know. But um, we're going to talk about how to get around this in, a, in an easy way. The interesting thing here is that normally in a situation like this, they would push you towards... Uh, signing up for their service uh, and to purchase it but here on this screen they actually don't even give you a link to direct you to how to do this you know let's say you say okay I want to set up a, a work email well, they don't even tell you how to do this and so it's on you to go out and figure out how to do this what they're what you're gonna find if you do this is what they want you to do both Google and Microsoft is to come to their uh, email service here and they're going to want you to come to Microsoft 365 and sign up. And uh, I've done this, and it's $6 a month. I pay $6 a month, and uh, it's fine. You know, you can you go out, you purchase a domain, and you purchase uh, this $6 a month plan, and you can link it, and so you have email under your uh, website name. But let's say you don't want to go through all this, right? So how do we do this uh, completely for free? So I'm going to come here and open up and come to mail.com. And now if I just use something at mail.com, it's going to tell me this looks like a personal email address. So uh, we're going to click here on sign up. What you'll notice is they have different handles that you can use at the end of these things. So right here at this, this box up here, you click on this. It has a bunch of different handles. So before we go any further, let's talk about what allows mail.com to be able to use all of these endings on email addresses. So typically, if you wanted to have an email address that ends in something like this, you would have to go out and rent out the domain name. Basically, you're paying $1 a month to uh, rent this thing out, and you would come to Google Domains, there's a bunch of different domain providers. Google Domains is not the only one, but it's the one I use because it's the simplest to use. And so if we wanted to purchase, let's say, accountant.com, let's say we were an accountant and we wanted to open up our website called accountant.com, we would type this in the search bar. And then just like renting a house or an apartment, you can only rent it out if no one else is renting it. So if it's being rented by someone, then we're out of luck. We have to find a different ending uh, for our email or a different .com. So we could do .sale, .market, you see here, .movie, but we couldn't use .com because it says it's already registered to someone. So we can find out who owns the domain by clicking here, and you can see it's World Media Group. And so when you come through all of these ending emails and check them out, it's all owned by this World Media Group company. So obviously they're affiliated with Mail.com and uh, they, they're basically reserving this thing so that no one's going to be able to come in and purchase this ending website name out from, from under you and cause problems with your email account. Uh, no one's going to be able to register an email account with this name other than the people who come to Mail.com and choose to create an email with the same ending. Sometimes you'll receive this error right here saying a technical error has occurred. Um, this does not mean that the email is unavailable. It just means that an error has occurred. We have to go back out into mail.com. We'll click sign up again. 
still a technical error has occurred. So I'm going to come back out, refresh, let's see. We just have to keep playing around with it until it works. Okay, so now it looks like it's working. So let's do this right here, let's see. Okay, so now it's working again. So from here, I'm going to check on my name at mail.com and it's already been assigned. So uh, we want to find one that's not been assigned. I'm going to choose um, my name and we'll put a number at the end. Awesome, your choice of email is still available. So now once we have indication that this email is available, uh, that's when we go over to Power BI and check. So Andrew McGee anything mail.com is going to be viewed as a personal email address. So that's when we come back over here and we look down these names, uh, these ending names. So <clears throat> I tried doctor.com. <clears throat> Looks like a personal email address. So you just have to go down through here and try all these out. Uh, I have found one that works, and that is computer4u.com. You can check that. You can see that that's good to go. <clears throat> and then once it recognizes it as good, uh, it'll come here to this page saying to set up a new account. Okay, so we know that it doesn't like it when it's a personal email. So I'm going to say I got it from my organization. We're going to say next. And now it brings us to the create an account section. So now we're past that paywall. So let's come back into mail.com and set this up. And so um, I got to remember what I did. All right, I did my name at computer for you.com. So now we'll set up this email. I'm going to pause the video and enter in all this, and then we'll pick it back up. All right, so I finished filling all that in, and I'm going to hit agree. Okay, and so we can see that uh, it's gone through setup here, and it says almost done. Your mailbox is waiting for you. Simply click on the green button to activate your account and get started. So I'm going to do that, and there we go. So now we have an email address set up, drew.mcgee at computer4u.com. So now we're going to come back over here to Power BI, uh, Microsoft Power BI. And we can see we've got that Drew McGee at computer4u.com. So now I'm just going to, I would enter in all my information, uh, confirm the details, and I should be good to go. All right, now it has a verification code down here. It says we've sent a verification code to the email. So we'll come back over here. We'll see there's an email account here. So we'll copy that, paste it in here. Business phone number, you can enter your real phone number. Um, if you're uncomfortable doing that, you can set up a Google Voice phone number. Um, it's the same thing. Uh, it'll, you'll download an app to your phone. It'll give you a, a number, and then it'll send text messages directly to your, your phone. So this is how I do these without entering my real phone number. Um, so uh, I'll just enter that Google Voice number, and then the text will come to my phone through the Google app. Um, so that's an option there. It says, uh, they'll contact me about the trial. I will receive information tips. Okay, it doesn't look like you can opt out of that. So I would like Microsoft to share my information with partners. So I'm not going to click that. So I'm going to click Next here after I enter my phone number. Okay, it says, your account is successfully created. Please sign in to continue. Take me to a sign-in window. I'll click get started. Okay, and so I don't think any of this matters here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click out of this, <clears throat> click off of this, then I'll come back into Power BI here, and let's enter in this email we just created.
click on that name there, enter in the password. And there we go, we're in.